So hopefully this will give you a decent shot of the threads. Before we remove this from the lathe, I think I'm going to bore the hole all the way through the center, which will be challenging because that's only going to be a three millimeter diameter hole because the needles are 2.1, 2.2, 2.7 millimeters. So we'll make a three millimeter diameter hole and we're going to drill all the way through, which will probably be challenging. To give you a better feel of what's going on, this is the rear end of the spindle. This is the front end of the spindle with the brown and sharp threads on it for brown and sharp chuck. And I need to t remove some material off the end here as well uh, because uh, I left it extra long, especially with this piece, so that I could hold it to cut these fins. But I don't need that material anymore. So first I'm going to remove that so I don't have to drill through any excess material because the three millimeter hole is going to be hard enough as it is. So here's the back end of it where I'm expecting these to expand out and push against this end just to hold it in place. Right now it's a very smooth fit, not any slop. So if I just expand these by 10 or 20 thousandths, it's going to be plenty tight. First step, I'm just going to part it off. Just for beauty's sake, we're going to chamfer the end here. And then we're going to drill some holes. Oh, and this side can be made larger because I want it to lead the, the needles in. So I'm going to leave a tapered entrance to this, like so, which is much bigger than the needles. Start to drill making sure not to load up any chips because I don't want it to deflect the drill bit as it's going in. This is going to be a long and tedious process. I'm just sliding the whole tail stock in and out, making a small motion, motion forward, removing the thread, I'm moving the swarf, now we got a much longer one. And I don't think this drill bit is long enough to make it in a single pass. So we're going to have to flip the part around and try and catch it on the other side, which always makes me nervous because if you miss by a little bit, you're going to have a ridge. Well, that's it from this side. That's the longest drill bit I've got. Now, if I had a problem with the meeting, since I started with the front side, since all I want is to be able to push needles through this way, through the part, I could make this hole larger on this side. So if I missed by like a couple millimeters, rather than have one of the needles catch on like the edge of the part, I could just make this hole on this side bigger to meet up with it so that there's no chance that it would run into it. Because as long as it keeps getting larger as I go this direction, there's no chance that it's going to run into anything, if you get my point. We're going to try and be accurate. So we're going to start with the center drill again on this side. Choke up on the drill bit to get it started. Might as well switch to the bigger drill bit. And we found the center of the other hole, I think. Excellent. All right, done. All right, so the hole went all the way through. What we need to do now is the needle test. So the needles will be going in pointed side uh, facing the opposite direction because that's the side that needs to be welded. So they'll be coming in this direction. Do they catch in the middle? And the answer is, it doesn't seem like so. I don't feel, I don't feel a ridge in the center where they could hang up. So I think we're good. Next up, we're going to make the mating piece to this guy. So we're going to start with the hole down the center here. Next up, we need to drill a hole, well, bore a hole, 0.668 inches. That's the minor diameter of the threads that are going to be in the middle. 
this point, this three millimeter hole will go all the way through the part to let the needles just go right out. But we're gonna use an end mill, a 5 8 end mill to first bore most of the material out of the way and then we'll come back with a boring bar and finish it off. All right, so we're gonna bore this and as long as we're going in, might as well go in with a little bit of extra clearance. Half an inch it is. We'll bore out the rest of the material. Just quicker to remove it this way in one go than it is to uh, make, you know, work my way up in boring bar sizes, etc. This just takes out a lot of material really quickly and does a relatively clean job with a relatively flat bottomed hole. There is a little bit of relief on the edge of the cutter here that goes towards the middle. So the outsides are cutting slightly deeper than the inside but it's close to flat and uh, we don't need anything perfect for this because it's just for the threaded portion. That's it. All right, so we're just gonna bore out the next section. Just taking a very light cut. Okay, now let me give preliminary measurement. That, that end mill cut oversized. So we're going to see where we're at here. Wow. It's two thousandths under. Jeez Louise. Okay. This will do a two thousandths pass. All right. So next we're going to take the outside diameter to the large diameter, uh, which will be 1.3 inches. And we're going to go about Oh, let's say half an inch again. Take a hundred fifty thousandths cut. Don't break chips on this stuff, but you do get a really clean finish, especially with positive rake inserts. Okay, so we need forty eight thousandths to come off. Just gonna take it in one bite here. Okay, should be there. I'll buy a thousandth over, no problem. First up, I'm gonna cut some thread relief here. I don't need threads going all the way to the back. So that's provided me a hundred thousandths back relief, hundred thousandths depth. So I was all ready to do the threads here until I realized that I won't be able to test my threads if I don't do the taper first because it won't fit inside the other part. So we actually have to do the taper first. So I need to set my compound to 1.828 degrees. Go figure. All right, so I got my four inch tangent engineering sign block here, 0.128 uh, gauge block under that side. And we'll set my zero. I've already bounced this around quite a bit. Looks like we need a little bit of a tap here moved. Let's go back. Set my zero. And it's still dropping just a tiny bit. I think we're really good. There's the tiniest bit of motion, but I think that's changing directions on this guy. Let's see, snug it down, make sure it stays. Yep, over four inches, we are good. 
Alrighty, so we're going to use the compound to cut this taper. And I know that we want about 30 thousandths off, so I'm just going to go for it right off the bat. We're going to do 25. Okay, that almost goes all the way to the back, which makes sense. Might as well just go straight for 30 thousandths. Nice. So the part that I need that's critical is this front diameter needs to be small enough to fit. Okay, we need to go in just a tiny bit more. Okay, that should be it. Well, I screwed the taper up. I, I took, cut too much material off, so I've scrapped the part. So we got to start over again. I'm just going to part this off, start over, and I'll bring you back when I catch up. All right, so we're back to where we left off. We're cutting the taper. So I've got 0.130 out here, but I actually don't want it to start stretching way in here because it might break the plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a straight cut and remove some material just a ways in so that the, the taper won't engage until it's in at least a quarter of an inch. Because uh, I'm worried that it's going to try and squeeze the part of the plastic where the tines meet back here. And if it pushes it apart there, it might break these off. So instead, I'm going to have it not engage till it's a quarter inch in. So we're just going to take some material off short way in so that it won't even try and split it until it's in a little bit. That should have been the spring pass. Should be able to test this guy now. There it is. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Still a little tight, so maybe we need another thousandth or two. Okay. Let's see how that did. That was two thousandths off the thread, which you know normally you take one thousandths increments, but if with this plastic, I don't know how easy that's gonna be. Oh, that starts a lot easier. There it is. It's spreading. That's good. Okay. So I cleaned up this part here, made it from a straight vertical to a taper. So it's smooth. it goes smoothly up on the transition portion here, larger diameter, which is what we want. And uh, I think we're ready to just finish this part off. I want to just give this guy a chamfer real quick, but I gotta clean some stuff up here and we'll be right back. All right, so here's the final assembly of this part. Here's the spindle, this is the front. The needles will be entering that part. This uh, piece goes forward like so. Then, then uh, that scared me there with the bubble wrap popping. This thread piece goes on the back. It's a little tight, but it's not gonna come in and out a lot. I put some flats on here over in the mill. I didn't show that because it's really quick and simple. So I got this mostly threaded in here. And to get the last little bit, I got a couple keys in here. That'll prevent this from rotating. The keys line up on both sides, which is convenient. Just tighten this guy. Starting to snug. Pop this out, the keys out, and that guy's nice and tight. So part one done. The needles will be entering backwards like so. 
and they fall right out the other side. The important thing is that they can be, let's pop this one like this and get a second needle here. Because what's going to happen is they're going to be pushed like this. So one needle is going to push the next one, which is going to push the next one, etc. All right, so that's a good start. I think we're good to go here. Thank you.